Well, I just received from a Unified Command a, a copy of the recording of the press briefing held today on April the 26, 2021. I was very excited to get it, and uh, we have included it here uh, on the website. This is the press briefing from uh, this morning, and uh, we wanted to share it with you. Uh, we'll try to get some, some more information. Uh, we're going to include the the speakers who were who were there as representatives uh, at Unified Command in the description uh, below. So if you guys want to check that out, but here's the pressing, here's the the brief from today. Uh, back in December 2019, you all said that there were still 44,000 gallons of fuel aboard the Golden Ray. Has that since been removed? Can you talk about the oil still on the ship? And with this latest cut. Have you seen any oil sheens or any fuel that has leaked out since the EPB is open? The, uh, Tom, I want to I want to correct the record. That was 44,000 gallons unaccounted for, okay. not remaining on board. Um, in as as responders, we are compelled to plan for worst case scenarios, and the numbers that we were releasing were, in our mind and best estimates, worst case scenario numbers. So that is not to say that there's 44,000 gallons out there. It's just not accounted for at this, that, at this point. Can you repeat the rest of your question? As far as the EPB being open and this cut being so close to the engine room, have you seen any oil sheens since it's open? Have you had any issues with that? Yes, we have. We've seen, we've seen some, uh, some oil yesterday. Uh, it was probably the most prevalent amount, but it all did remain in the EPB. There was also oil sheen, which did make it outside of the EPB. And those resources that I talked about were utilized to recover and or break that up. I have something to just add real quick, sorry. So when we do open the gate, because um, it's necessary to open it up so that we can go ahead and bring in the barges and so on like that, we have assets there that with fire monitors that it's gonna go ahead and direct and move that oil back into the EPP and towards the current busters that are going to collect all that sheening and uh, in potential discharge. So that we we put all those efforts in place to mitigate the effects of the environment out here. Russ, what's the realistic timeline at this point when the last section of the Golden Ray will be taken out? If they were So our plans, based on what we've, we've carried out thus far, really tell us we're definitely going to be here for several more months. Right? We, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be tough to pin down a date. I, I wouldn't like to speculate on a date. Uh, but I do tell you that everything we've developed so far it's, and the lessons we've learned, especially from Section 7, will contribute greatly to expedite the, that end point. Some of those vehicles 
are removed here and transported to a recycle, local recycling facility. I don't have those numbers offhand, but we can get those numbers yes. for you. When you said approaching the 50% mark, you were referring to? The total number of cars. Oh, okay. Right. Um, As a whole. As a one whole. other thing, please. Um, now that y'all have got to, you know, this last one you cut, the completely great five chain, or I won't pretend to know it all, but all that goes on, but I understand it's the strongest out there. Would you finish off these four with grade four chain? I mean, grade five chain? That's what we're looking at right now. Okay. The key is going to be to uh, implement single lens under the hull of the ship without connecting them. So that's what the engineers are looking at. Correct. Right across. Right across the whole seabed. Troy, the question is, um, when you come up to the podium in the future for uh, several more months, um, how would, both with whatever cuts are made in the meantime and the impact of the hurricane season and any change with tides, how might that impact the stability of the wreck? So the, when you look at the stability of the wreck, it, it's basically a relationship between the footprint, right, of the bed, the weight of that section, and the footprint, and how that's distributed to the ground. In reality, as, as we cut the ends off, in the wreck, the footprint is becoming more in line with the seabed. So in our opinion, and based on everything that we're seeing every day through our motion sensing, she will actually be more stable. Um, my next question would be for uh, DNR is, um, so beyond the several months that it'll take to complete the wreck, how long might it take to truly kind of assess the environmental impacts of wreck overall? Yeah, so, so that's really an unknown right now until the wreck is removed. Uh, there's ongoing water sampling, soil sediment sampling, air monitoring, um, all of that will continue after the ship is gone until we're satisfied that the environment is back to where it was before this. So, but for how long, that we can't answer that. Joe, Lily, or Pam, any questions? I've got a question. Yeah. Uh, by percentage, rough percentage, how much heavier are the cut pieces now because of mud than what you thought they were? You can go to the podium. Yeah, yeah. Calculator is going to calculate those numbers in his head. It's a good question. Uh, I, I would uh, estimate him by percentage. We're at about forty percent, forty percent heavier. So that necessitated the need to take out cars and correct. Water. Now the, the whole we know about the mud here in South Georgia. Yes. That was one of the first questions I asked him. <laughs> Pam, any I'm questions? Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I'll take oh, yeah, one, one, well, one more question. When does the heat, when does the lease end over at Epworth? How long will the lease be in? <laughs> <laughs> I believe currently we have Epworth through August. Is it open? open Can I go over there? the rest of Epworth yeah, yeah there are sections that are open there are certain okay. yes Epworth yes absolutely yes. All right. but keep in I mind. haven't been there because I'm not allowed to but <laughs> yeah so it's a homework call the hurricane season because Commander Lopez you had mentioned that you all have processes in place I mean it looks like we're going to be here probably even into the peak of hurricane season this year I, I think what would be on a lot of people's minds is if we have a ship that's both ends are cut off whatever portion is left and we have a storm that come in, that, that this could be a recipe for slinging a lot of stuff around. I mean, can you tell us just a, a bit more about what the plan would be if a hurricane comes and we have some portion of this still left out there? What do you do to, to secure it? So as, as Mr. Greedo mentioned, the, that center section is, is pretty much sitting on the seafloor. So the secure, they're pretty comfortable that the, that section will remain in its place. Obviously, we have the environmental protection barrier, all right, and that'll re that'll go ahead and uh, hold in most of the larger sections and so on like that. Is there going to be debris that's going to escape and go to the shorelines and so on like that? Probably, and, and we have the assets here after the storm passes that we can deploy and recover all that debris. So, 
we know that we've tested our heavy weather plan and it's extremely effective. So we can secure our assets, we can secure our personnel, we can go ahead and maintain our posture here so that as soon as that storm passes and it's safe for our responders to go out into the field, we will be deploying them at that time.